Praise the Lord, everyone. It is our prayer time. This is Sunday night. It's 7 p.m. We're in our prayer room where we come and we pray and we believe God. God answers our prayers. He meets our needs. He gives us the desires of our hearts. <clears throat> he empowers us. He enables us. He draws us closer to him. And we are so thankful that God has proven himself time and time again in our prayer tower. So we're here tonight. We're praying for our men. We are praying for our men tonight. That is the assignment that God gave us several months ago. So we are praying. We are faithful in our calling to do what he has uh, ordained us to do in this hour. We are praying for our men. So I'm going to open up in prayer and then we are going to begin praying for those names that we have on the list. And I said the last time that we're going to soon, praise the Lord, Lady Lyles, Minister Smith, all the prayer warriors, Mother Shirley, Sister Dion, all of you all that are coming on tonight, agreeing with us in prayer. We are here to agree in prayer. I just want to say again, at the end of this year, we're going to retire this list. So we're going to be taking, uh, you can use the same names, you can add the same names again, but we're going to retire this list. There are some names on here that we're going to take off. So we're just going to do it all over again. And we're going to keep that list of names until the Lord says otherwise. But we're going to open up in prayer. Then we're going to get right into prayer. And I have a special prayer. I want to start off with a prayer of healing um, for minister, for uh, Pastor Kaiser, praying for Pastor Kaiser. We want to pray, believe God for his healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray. And then that's the first prayer we're going to pray. And then we're going to start uh, praying for all the names we have. If you have names that are not on this list and you want to add, please just put them in the chat. And as we're looking, we will incorporate those names where we are praying. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We just bless your name for this time of prayer. This time we can come in and just cast our cares on you. Thanking you for your precious, precious keeping of us, your children. You are so good to us. We thank you that we have an audience with you. We can come in anytime and bring our cares and our concerns and we can just lay them at your feet. And I'm so thankful that you hear us when we pray. That is one of the most amazing things is that we have audience with the God of the universe hears us. Not only does he hear us, but he's waiting for our call. I bless your name, God, because you are good to us. You are better than good to us. We just are so, um, we're just so in awe of how you care for us, how you take care of us, how you provide for us, how you keep us, how you instruct us, how you speak to us. And we just bless you for that tonight. So we're here tonight in our seven o'clock prayer on Sunday night where we pray for our men. We pray for our black men. We pray for all of our men. We pray, God, that um, the power that your your um, word has in it would just keep and cover them. We're praying for their individual needs, individually and collectively. We are confessing over their lives what your word declares. They may not be walking in it at this particular moment, but we are confessing it over their lives that they will walk in everything your word declares for them. So we thank you for it tonight. We give you praise. We count it as being already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to get into our prayer tonight. We're going to get into our prayer. And I first want to pray for um, Pastor Tyrone Kaiser. Pastor Tyrone Kaiser. And I'm not even going to speak what I heard because you know what? I, I don't want to give. I'm, I'm not giving no entity none of my time if I don't have to. I, mm -mm, I'm not giving him no time, but we're praying and I'm sure um, everyone on here, everyone on here has heard that, has heard what is going on or what is said to be going on in his body. And I'm not, I'm not saying that people are lying. I'm saying that I'm not going to breathe any life into that. I'm giving no life to that. 
when we start talking about the tongue and the mouth, you, we're going to see how when we say something, we speak life to it. When we when we say certain things, we speak life to those things. And I'm not speaking life to nothing negative. It's not going to happen with me anymore. I'm learning to watch my mouth. I'm learning to watch the words that come out of my mouth that are that are issued through this tongue. So we're just speaking health and healing. And again, my prayer is, and I'm sure he's a, I know he's a man of God. I know he's standing in agreement, but what we're standing in agreement tonight. So just a couple of scriptures for Pastor Kaiser, and then we're going to move on. Uh, let me see. First Peter 2, 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by his stripes. Pastor Kaiser was healed. Yes, sir. Would you write down Chucky Brady? Chucky Brady. Yeah, he, he, he died in Yorkshire County and Roger Peacock. Okay. You know, I don't know if you know any Peacock fans in you know. Okay. But he, he died. Brady and Peacock family. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you. Okay. Come on, sir. His food is up on the on the counter in the kitchen. Get he it for him. I need to die too, did he? Yes. Uh, mention him. Okay. He said something. Oh, uh, you know, Jan Green's sister, the Green family, put them down. Okay. She, he, her, I think it's her older sister died. Okay. He was telling me. Come on, sir. Okay. All right, so we have some families that we're going to be praying for in their time of grief, but we're going to finish this prayer for Pastor Tyrone Kaiser. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will, will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 53 and 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. Psalm 41 and 3, The Lord sustains him. And in his illness, you restore him to full health. Father, we come right now. We prayer warriors stand in agreement for your word, for your word to be manifest in the pastor, in the body of Pastor Tyrone Kaiser. We stand on your promise tonight, God. You said we could come boldly. You said we could ask. We could expect your word to come to life, come to fruition in his body. Father, we thank you now that we can come to you and we can count on your word. You are the healer. You are the breasted one. Your words heal. Your words heal. And we speak life over Pastor Kaiser tonight in the name of Jesus. We speak life to every cell. We speak life to his body and everything that has no business being in his body. We, we curse it at the root. And we command it to dismantle, be destroyed, be um, tore down to the point where it cannot be erected ever again. We stand on the promise of your word and we're asking. No, we're not. We're not asking. We are commanding your word, Father, in his body. You gave us authority. In the book of Luke, in the 10th chapter, you gave us authority over all of the power of the enemy. And your word declares, Father, in John chapter 10, 10, verse 10, John 10 and 10, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you came that Pastor Kaiser might have abundant life. So we speak abundant life over Pastor Kaiser tonight in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare health and wholeness in his body. Father, we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We decree and declare wholeness and health and health and health for Pastor Geyser. I'm not surprised because the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the enemy knows the assignment that rests on God's people. And anything he can do to stop it or block it, that's what he'll do. But he don't have a right to interfere. He does not have a right to send sickness and, and disease on these bodies. They belong to God. 
So we have to remind him, you're a trespasser. You are a squatter and you have no business there. And because you have been called out as a trespasser and a squatter, you must leave. The word of God has eviction power in it to evict the, the, um, the, um, the, the symptoms of the enemy. The Holy Spirit has power. God's word has power to evict every trespasser. And that includes the trespassers of sickness and disease. That's not God's plan for us. We don't see that in his, in his word concerning his people. So we, we issue a decree tonight in the spirit. Get your hands off of him. Take your hands off of God's anointed and be gone. Dismantle everything you erected against him. Take it with you back to the pit of hell from whence you came. And Father, we thank you for our power to decree a thing, and it will be so. We thank you for that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let me get to these that have lost um, loved ones. And also, um, Sister Celeste lost a, a brother. So let me get some brief scriptures really quickly here. And we're going to pray for them because all of us have gone down that that road. Give me just one second. And I believe her brother's service is going to be this coming Saturday. So prayer warriors, keep her in your prayers. Um, hold on. I do not have this one on here. So I just need to add it really quickly. And we will be praying some grief scriptures. All right. All right. So our first one is Psalm 34 and 18. And it says, the Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Psalm 147 and 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your care on him, because he cares for you. And finally, Matthew 5 and 4 says, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. So we're praying for the Brady family, the Peacock family, the Green family, the Hill family, Sister Celeste Medley, that family. We're praying for all those who have experienced any form of grief this year. And there, ha there are multiple families that we can list on here. But we want to believe God for comfort for these families right now. Heavenly Father, again, we come with the authority of your word. You gave us your word to use, and we're using your word tonight. Father, we just know that during this time of grief, during this time of sorrow, you are upholding them with your righteous right hand. You are holding them. You are carrying them. You are causing them to soar in your power and in your strength. Father, we pray that every need is supplied. Father, we pray for every surviving family member that in this time of grief and sorrow, that they raise their eyes and look to the hills from whence cometh their help because their help comes from you. Father, we know you're able to keep them. We know that you are carrying them through. Father, we trust you with their heart because you, God, are the heart mender. So, Father, we trust you. We trust your care and concern for them because you're a good dad. You are a good dad. And even in this season of great trial and, and pain and suffering and uh, all of the, the emotions that come with death, Father, we pray in this season that by your mighty hand that you are taking them through, you're carrying them. Father, we're going to believe that because we've seen you do it time and time and time again because you have comforted us in our time of grief and you are no respecter of persons. So if you did it for us, we know that you're doing it for them, your children. So we bless you for that tonight, God. We say thank you. We give you all praise and glory. And even as 
Sister Celeste, um, this this um, coming Saturday, as they lay her brother to rest, Father, we believe you're carrying our prayer warrior. We believe, God, that you're going to take her through, her and her family. We believe, God, that you're taking them through right now, and we'll give you praise and glory in advance for what you are doing for them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, so we're going to get to our list tonight, amen, where we at? we're a quarter after. All right, we're going to be praying. Our first prayer is, what does the Bible say about provision? So we're going to be praying for our first group, those, all right, amen, the Brian Payne family. And I did not hear anything more about services for him at all. So if anyone knows um, if there are services that are going to be for him, I don't know that I will go, but I would at least like to know. So if you hear anything, Mother Shirley, please let me know. Amen. So we're going to go to our first group of, of people on our prayer uh, prayer list. We're praying for Tony, Terrell, Nathan, Carter, uh, Zane. We're praying for Lyle. We're praying for Rob Tay, um, Gary F., Larry Marcus. We're praying for Prophet Darren, Darian. William, Patrick, Matthew, Brody, David, all of the Davids, because we have multiple Davids, Haven, Zion, Timothy, Jason, H, Stephen, J, Johnny, Butch, Leroy, Jodeci, Xavier, JD, and DJ. So that's our first group that we're praying for tonight, and we are praying provision for them in the name of Jesus. And our first scripture is Philippians 4, 19. And I call this an all-purpose scripture because it covers so many things. And it is, and my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And the word of God tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So he has no limitation on anything. He has no limitation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, and God is able, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, abound to them, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, they may abound to every good work. God supplies us, so we are able to help with every good work. We're able to supply for everything God has called us to do, called them to do. They'll have supply for it. We talked about that earlier this morning. Everything God graces us to do, he brings supply along with it. So we stand on the word of God saying that they will have, the Bible scripture actually says he makes all grace. Again, there's that word grace. We are, we are kissed with grace. We are, grace is the provision. Grace is anything we need that will go along with what God has called us to do. So having all sufficiency at all times, they are able to abound or to be prosperous in every good work. Let's see, Psalm 37, 25 through 26 says, and this is the writer David saying, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaking nor his seed begging bread. And we don't often hear part B to this scripture, which says he is ever lending generously. Our God is a generous God. He's never been stingy. He doesn't have to be stingy because he's not worried about his supply running out. I like that. He doesn't have to be stingy. People are worried about if I give you some of what I got, then I'm, I'm not going to have what I need. And that's fear that they're not going to have everything they need. But this scripture says he's ever lending generously because he knows his supply will not ever. We can't we can't pull on him enough and pull him till he's in the poor house. His supply will never run out. I like that. His supply will never run out and his children become a blessing. Let me get just a couple more. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. And we're talking about, we are talking about provision for these men. Psalm 37, 18 through 19. The Lord knows the days of the blameless and their heritage will remain forever. They are not, they are not put to shame in evil times or times of struggle, times of oppression. And in the days of famine, in the days of want and lack, they, the people of God, those that we are calling on their name, they will have abundance in the time of trouble. This scripture speaks to us. The world may be in abundance, but the righteous, 
are never going to be, the world may be in lack, but the righteous will never be, they will never be in, a, in, in lack. And the scripture actually says that their days will have abundance. So we have abundance because we have the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And our final one for our, let's see, um, for our abundance or provision is Matthew 7, 7 through 11. It says, ask and will be given you, seek and you will find, knock. And the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks find and to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent. If you then, if we then who are carnal know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will your father who is in heaven Give good things to those who ask him. And we're asking for these men tonight. Tony Terrell, Nathan Carter, Zane, Lyle, Darian, William, Patrick, Matthew, Brody, David, all the Davids, Haven, Zion, Timothy, Jason, Stephen, Jay, Johnny, Butch, Leroy, Jodeci, Xavier, DJ, and JD. Father, we come in the name of Jesus for these young men or these men. We don't know their ages. But Father, we come tonight and we are standing in the authority of your word. We're standing on the promises of your word. You said ask and we would receive. Seek and we'll find. Knock and the door shall be open. So Father, we are asking tonight for these men. We are asking God that whatever their need for whatever season they are in, that God, that that need would be filled in the name of Jesus. Whatever the need, because God, you are the breasted one. There is no lack anywhere in you. You have abundance in everything, abundance in healing, abundance in health, abundance in wealth, abundance in provision, abundance in promotion, abundance for every season of their life comes from you. And you said that we, even us carnal, us carnal beings, we can ask for, for things or our children can ask for us from us. But God, your word says, how much more will you give the father in heaven? Because everything belongs to you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So there is no lack in you. There is no lack in you. So father, we ask you to bless them according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not our riches, but according to your riches. Father, we believe provision available for every season of their life. Provision available, God. Provision, Father, cause them to be blessed in the field. Bless God in, in their going and their coming. Father, whatever their hands are set to do, Father, we decree blessing. Blessing over them, Lord. Because when they see the blessing of God, when the world see the blessing of God, it is just an announcement that our God is still alive and that you're still dealing in the affairs of men. So, Father, we thank you tonight for a provision for these people, these men. God, that you would supply all of their need. No need is too big and no need is too small. And we agree on it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. And I forgot to put our scriptures on here for salvation. So let me do that because we're going to pray over all of our uh, men before we get started. Um, the scriptures for salvation. Give me one second. Amen. All right, so we're going to get our salvation scriptures. And we're praying for all of our men. We're not going to say all their names, but we're praying for all of our, our men they may not know him, and that is ultimate. That is the ultimate thing for our lives. Because even if we're healed every day, we still, the Bible says, it is a point unto man wants to die, and then the judgment. So we got to get this ready right here and now. This is our opportunity, and it is their opportunity. So we're praying salvation for all of our men. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace have you been saved through faith, it is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. Titus 3 and 5, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Acts 4 and 12 says, neither 
Is there salvation in any other? For there is no other name under heaven given whereby we must be saved. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will, they will be saved. John 14 and 6 says, and Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus for every man listed on this list tonight. And we don't know they're standing with you, but Father, we pray that every one of these men have accepted you as their Savior and their King. Father, we pray salvation for them in spite of everything. That is our hope. That is our hope, God, that we live forever with you in heavenly places. And we pray that tonight for these men. Father, we pray that they have made their calling and election sure. We pray, God, that as you have spoken to their heart, as you have drawn on them, as you have come near them, that they have received the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that they have made you the Lord of their lives. Father, we pray that they are walking in your perfect plan because you have, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you have a perfect plan for their life. And we decree and declare tonight, God, that if they don't know you, Father, as you continue to woo them and as you continue to draw them, that the stony heart, the heart that might be um, taken in offense or the heart that might be fearful or those that may not even know. God, we're praying tonight that some way, somehow you raise up a voice that they will listen to and that they will hear and they will hearken to that word and they will surrender to you. Father, that's what it's about in this final hour. It's wonderful when you supply needs. It's wonderful when you heal bodies. All that stuff is wonderful and amazing. But Father God, ultimately, ultimately, we have had to make you the Lord of our life. We are supposed to be walking in the calling that you decreed for us, God. So we pray that tonight for every man, every boy, every older man on this list tonight. That if they don't know you, Father, that they will listen. They will hear your voice because you're always calling. You are always calling. You will never stop calling and you call through us. So, Father, even give us greater, uh, give us greater opportunities. Help us to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit as you woo these people to you. God, as you draw them, you said without you drawing, they cannot even come. So we pray, God, tonight that you continue to draw them. We were once on the outside looking in. But, Father, I thank you that somebody prayed that the word of God went forth and we heard the word of God and we surrendered. Hallelujah. We surrendered to that wonderful call. So we're praying tonight, God, that these men would surrender if they have not yet done so. Father, we pray that they would surrender. God, because we know that you're going to keep calling on them. It is your will that all men come to repentance. So, Father, we agree with your word for their life tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Okay, so we're going to go to our next group of names. And this is Aiden Ronald Walt. Chance, Chase, Naiwan, Delante, Jordan, Isaiah, Latique, Andre, Brian, Brian, Kenan, Bobby, Corey, Gabriel, Isaiah, Joshua, Jamari, Adam, 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 Rob, David, Cliff, Gregory, Skip, Alex, Shannon, and Lamont. We're going to start there. We're going to stop right there. And we are going to pray for them. We are going to be praying. Amen. Let me get to my next category. Protection. We are praying protection for them. Amen. And we're going to start with some of, of um, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will they trust. For he will deliver them from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover them with his pinions and under his wings will they find refuge. Our next scripture for them is Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. 
And every word, every tongue that rises against them in judgment, we prayer warriors will refute. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication. Their vindication is from God. Amen. Second Thessalonians 2, 3 and 3 says, the Lord is faithful. He will establish them and guard them against the evil one. Psalm 32 and 7 says, you God are a hiding place for them. You preserve them from trouble. You surround them with shouts of deliverance. Amen. Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is their refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, only be strong and courageous. Do not be in fear or dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with them. We have prayed that they have been covered by the Lord God. It is the Lord God who goes with them. He will not leave them nor forsake them. So let me go back and start that list of names again. Aiden, Ronald, Walt, Chance, Chase, Naiwan, Delante, Jordan, Isaiah, Latik, Andre, Kenan, Bobby, Corey, Gabriel, Isaiah, Joshua, Jamari, Adam, Rob, David, Cliff, Gregory, Alex, Skip, Shannon, and Lamont. And we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for your protection of our men. We started praying earlier this year for our black men because of the rise of violence and, and the spirit of murder that was just taking them out just ridiculously. And Father, you laid it upon our hearts as prayer warriors to pray and cover our black men. Father, I thank you because I don't hear as much murder and mayhem uh, concerning our black men as I was hearing in the beginning of the year. And I believe, God, it has everything to do with the fact that somebody is praying. Father, I thank you for the weapon of prayer. I thank you for that. I thank you that we have audience with you. I thank you that you listen for our cry. You're waiting. You are waiting to do good. You're actually watching. You're watching them. You're watching to do good concerning these young men. And Father, I believe that because we prayer warriors have agreed with your word, the enemy's plan for many of them was shut completely down. I thank you, God how you watch over and you preserve and you keep day in and day out. That is not a small thing. And I give you glory for that. I praise you for that. The enemy's design is to kill, steal, and destroy. And because we prayer warriors have prayed, we have shut down the plan of the enemy. He meant to take many of them out, not just to hurt them, he doesn't come just to hurt. He comes to kill and to steal and to utterly destroy. But Father, I thank you that we prayer warriors have lifted up this mantle of prayer and we have prayed without fail for these individuals. And Father, I believe that because of our prayer, because of your prompting and our obedience, Father, I believe that the arm of protection has covered many of them. Father, I believe that death has had to turn around and go back because he didn't have authority to take them. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, for the decrease of violence. I thank you, God. I thank you that we heard and we're obedient. And all you're looking for anytime is an obedient heart. My sheke. So, Father, I bless your name tonight for what you have done. I thank you, God, for keeping those that have come, my family members, because of prayer, because we have called out to you and you have answered. So, God, we give you glory tonight for your protection. We don't take it lightly. We do not take this lightly. We know the enemy wants to destroy. But, Father, we thank you because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can, by your power, by your word, we can decree a thing and it will be done. So Father, we thank you for provision, protection for these individuals in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So let me go to my next group, amen, our next group of people. And let us go to our next prayer category 
Uh, we did provision. I believe we did that. We did provision. So let's go to the next one. Favor. Let's go to favor. And we are praying favor over. Let's see. We're praying favor over Brian, Aaron, um, Landon, Anthony, Martimus, Lucas, Lance, Cameron, Carlos, Lincoln, Nathan, Niall, Tayshawn, Naima, Pharaoh, Braxton, Jamari, Israel, Prophet, Brad, Dylan, Tony, Cedric, Esau, David, David, Tony, and Chuck. We're praying favor over them. So let me get to my favorite scriptures. 50, um, Psalm 5 and 12 says, For you, God, bless the righteous. O Lord, you cover him as with a shield. You cover him with favor as with a shield. Psalm 90 and 17 says, Let the favor of our Lord God be upon them. Let the favor of our Lord God be upon them and establish the works of their hands. Yes, establish the works of their hands. Psalm 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. This is one of my favorite scriptures because the scripture says, The Lord will not keep anything that's good from us. He will not keep anything that's good from us. Amen. Let me see. Uh, Psalm 30 and 5. For his anchor is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. God's favor rests on us for a lifetime. I like that. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Our, ne our next favor scripture. Uh, let's see. All right. Let me see. Let me get one more. My son, this is Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep God's commandments. We, we want their heart to keep God's commandments for length of days and long life and peace. Will they add to you? That's what God's word will add to them. That's why we pray protection, because the word of God will add length of days. The enemy wants to snuff us out right now. But because we are praying the scriptures over their lives, the Bible says that the favor of God will add length of days and peace will they add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. So will you find favor and good success in the sight of God and men. And that's what a lot of our black men need. They need favor and good success in the sight of God and man, not just in the sight of God, but and man. So when they go, when they go to take those things that somebody else says they will never, they're not good enough to stand in. They're not good enough to have that. The Bible says that they will have favor of man and God. So we're praying that tonight for, let me say their names one more time. Um, Jordan, Isaiah, Latik, Andre, Brian, Keenan, Bobby, Corey, Gabriel, Isaiah, Joshua, Jamari, Adam, Rob, David, Cliff, Gregory, Alex, Skip, Shannon, Lamont, Brian, Aaron, Landon, um, Anthony, Martim Mart Martimus, Lucas, Lincoln, Lucas, Lance, Cameron, Carlos, Lincoln, N um, Nathan, Niall, Tayshawn, Naima, Pharaoh, Braxton, Jamari, Israel, Prophet, Brent, Dylan and Tony, Cedric, Esau, David, David, Tony, and Chuck. I think I got some from the list above, but that's all right, because we want favor on all of them. Father, we come tonight in the authority to, of your word, and we are decreeing favor over our men. We are praying favor over them. Father, we believe you tonight to just add to their life. We curse every negative word that has been spoken over their life. Every negative word that says they will not amount to anything. Every negative word that decrees that they will not walk in success. Every negative word, God, that was spoken. Their family wasn't this. Their dad wasn't that. Every negative word that has been assigned to them, we curse that word in the name of Jesus.
And we change that word out. We switch that word out for favor. We switch that word out and we decree favor over their lives. Favor is more valuable than money because favor promotes where we normally would not have been promoted to. So Father, we're believing you tonight for favor over their lives, for every area of their life. Favor God in their uh, jobs, favor in their career, favor in their families, favor in their community, favor in their education, favor wherever they go, in and out. Let your favor go with and before them. Father, let your favor open doors that otherwise would not be open to them. So God, your will, your plan, your design, your greatness is seen in their life. And we bless you for it tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we can call on your name, that we can decree this and declare it. And your word will break, be, become life in their life so the world might know, God, that it's not by their power, it's not by their strength, but it's by you, God, who decrees and gives favor. Your word declares that favor is for a lifetime. So, Father, we just believe you now for favor to just cover them. Not just them, Father, but those that have children, that favor that just fall on their family in the name of Jesus, that you, God, be glorified in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, on to our next group of men. Our next group of men, we're praying for Billy, Brandon, Jazz, Joe, Joseph, Vincent, Jason, Johnny, Emmanuel, Zach, Alfonso, Sorrel, Jalen, David, Lamont, Jashur, Donnie, Stone, Dylan, Samaj, Taekwon, Tayshawn, Reggie, and Dijon. Dijon. Some of these names, amen, we bless the Lord for them, amen. And we do the best we can when we are calling them. All right. Now we're going to go to our justice scripture. And there's really only one scripture. There's multiple scriptures in the justice. And I'll read a couple of them, but there's one that just really is the end all be all for me. Um, let's see. Um, Isaiah 61 and 8 says, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That's a beautiful scripture because it lets us know that they don't have to fight for themselves. They don't have to fight. God will fight for them. Um, I was in a little situation yesterday and uh, a young man, and his name is on here, a young man, we were in a, we were all in a, in a, in the same place. And this, this young man got a little upset and Anytime there's something good going on, the devil always likes to show his ugly head, but we had to stomp it as soon as it's, you know, we see this, his head popping out. And um, I thank God because um, it could have gone way left, but those of us who had the Holy Spirit began to pray. And I saw this scripture. I saw the scripture because they, they were trying to aggravate, get something going to disrupt something good that was happening. But see, the Bible says God will fight for us. He'll fight for us. We don't have to fight for ourselves. And it was actually, there was a lot of black men there, young black men there. But again, the word of God is true. I actually saw this yesterday. So I thank God for the word because the word is true. And so our other justice scripture, and this is our last one, and this is Isaiah 30 and 18. And this is, the scripture is just absolutely phenomenal. And it says, therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to them. He's looking for an opportunity. I just think that is so amazing. God is looking for an opportunity to, to, to do good. And it goes on to say, therefore, he exalts himself to show mercy. He goes above and beyond to show mercy. Because see, the world, would, the world wants to accuse. They don't deserve mercy. Look what they did. They did so-and-so, so-and-so, X, Y, Z. But the scripture tells us uh, here that he exalts himself. He makes himself larger. He gives more um, amplitude to be merciful. Don't you love that? 
The mercy of God is great toward us. The mercy of God is great toward us. We don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. But God is looking for an opportunity to show mercy. I love that. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all of those who wait for them. And that is what we pray for them tonight. We pray that for Billy, Brandon, Jazz, Joe, Joseph, Vincent, J um, Jason, Johnny, Emmanuel, Zach, Alfonso, Sorrell, Jalen, Dave and Lamont, Jashur, Donnie, Stone, Dylan, Savage, Tequan, Tashan, John, uh, Reggie, Father, that you're, that you're a God of justice and you're looking for an opportunity to be gracious to these our men. You're looking for an opportunity, even though they may have been accused of doing something, you're still looking for an opportunity to be merciful to them. You're still looking for an opportunity, God, to cover them and to keep them. And I thank you, Father, that we're praying for their success. You're looking to just expand them. And Father, we agree with your word tonight that you are God of justice. They don't have to fight. All they have to do is stand still and see your salvation in every circumstance. Stand still and see the salvation of God because you're looking over them. You're watching over them. You're watching your word to perform in them and for them. And because you're doing that, God, you're exalting yourself. You're looking for any opportunity you can find to show mercy. And I thank you, God, for showing mercy to my family. I thank you, God, when they were in the wrong place. My men, the men in my family, when they were in the wrong place, you still were looking for an opportunity to show mercy. And you beat, you told the enemy, no, I don't care what you say. You still extended mercy. I thank you for that, God. You are amazing to us. We're not always right. We don't always do the right thing. We're not always perfect. But Father God, even in that, your word declares you're looking for an opportunity to do good to our men. So we praise you for that tonight. We give you glory and we give you all honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So we're going on to our next group. Our next group. Amen. And we're praying for somebody Smith. So we're just going to attach any male Smith to that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We're praying for Pastor Black, Ray, uh, Jay Goody, Brandon, Bassaman, Xavier, Ace. We have them already. We're praying for Michael. Amen. Mother Robert's grandson, Michael, AJ, Nathaniel, um, Roman, Devin, Shannon, Germani, uh, Rayshawn, Savion, Johnny, Orlando, Anthony, Rayshawn, um, Percy, Percy Sr. and Jr., Aiden, Cyril, um, Lyric, and Lamont. Okay, so let me get to my next group of scriptures. Amen. All right, let me see. Let me see. And we're going to pray health over them, not healing, but health over them. We're going to pray health over them, that they navigate through all this foolishness going on, and that they stay healthy, a healthy heart, a healthy body, and a healthy mind. And the first scripture is John 3. One and two says, beloved, I pray that all goes well with you, that you are blessed and that you would be in good health, even as your soul prospers. All right. Let me see. Um, Proverbs three, seven through eight says, be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. We want them to focus their heart toward God. These are young men, to my understanding. A lot of them are young men. And we know that if we, um, our health is attached to our obedience. Our health is attached to our obedience to God. So we want them to walk in obedience. We want them to have healthy bodies. That's why God called the young men, because they have strength. They have strength. They have endurance. They can keep on going when we just stopped a long time ago. 
I was watching my grandson yesterday and they are in their playoffs. They are in their playoffs. So you all continue to pray for them or pray for them. They are in the play play playoffs and they're hopeful to keep going all the way to the championship game and win the championship game. But I was watching those boys yesterday. And of course they have all, all of the, um, strength and ability and they just they just fall down and pop right back up. I mean, they just slide and pop right back up like they never fell. Now, for me, that wouldn't that wouldn't be the case. But um, even after the game was over, they didn't play about an hour and a half after they had won. My grandson and some other little boys, they began doing cartwheels on the field. That's why God called them because they have strength, they have ability, they can keep on going when us older people would have stopped. But that's why God called them. And I, and I know that he has a calling for all of these young men. We want them to walk in their calling. All right. Exodus 20, 23 and 25 says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and he will take sickness away from among them. We want them to walk in health and wholeness. We want them to walk in health and wholeness. The enemy wants them to start drinking early. He wants them to be around people that are smoking. He wants them to pick up those habits and those habits destroy the body. But we are praying health over our young men, health over our young men. Let me see if I can find one more. Let me see. Gracious words. This is Proverbs 16 and 24. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. That's why we speak over our young men, because the Bible says gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul, the mind, and health to the body. That's why it's important to speak over your young men um, in just a way of a small testimony, because I told you that I now do this every time I see my grandson. I do this every time I see my grandson. I look in the square in his face. And if I can get close to him, I get right in his face and I decree and declare it over his life to the point now when I see my grandson, I point to him and I say, what is about, what does the word say about you? What, what, what are you? And he recites back to me what I called him. Now I know what the world calls them, but it is now in his spirit what I decree about him. So, and I'm telling you all, we're going to get in there when we talk about the tongue and the mouth. The Bible says that we have power to bless and curse. So if we're not blessing with this mouth, somebody's losing out. Somebody is losing out. The word here tells us that we're just supposed to, gracious words are like a honeycomb. So we're to utter gracious words over our family. That's why this prayer is so important. So let me say this last group again, this group one more time. We're praying for all the Smiths, uh, Pastor Black, Ray, Jay, Jay Goody, Brandon, Bassam, and Xavier, Ace, Michael, AJ, Nathaniel, Raymond, Devin, Shannon, um, Germani, um, Rayshawn, Savion, Johnny, Orlando, Anthony, uh, Percy, Senior and Junior, Aiden, Cyril, Cyril, Cyril Lyric, Lamont, um, and I think that was the last, the last one. And I want to say this scripture one more time. Proverbs 16, 24 says, gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Father, we come tonight in behalf of these men and we're praying health over their body for the longevity of their life. They don't have to be sick. There's nowhere in the scripture that says that we have to have sickness. There's nowhere in the scripture that says we have to be sick at any time. So, Father, we decree health for the longevity of their life. Father, I pray for every young man. I pray for every young man tonight that he has a healthy mind, a healthy spirit, a healthy body. I pray, God, that they walk according to your word. Father, I pray that the forces that would try to entice them to partake of things that will kill them, I pray, God, that there is an awareness and that they flee. They flee away from these enticements that the enemy sets up for them. His, he, he comes to destroy them. 
He wants to destroy their youth because he knows they're valuable. They are footmen in the kingdom because they have strength. They have endurance. They have longevity of life. So we pray, we decree over our young men that they, they stay away from, that they consecrate these bodies. Father, that they consecrate their bodies back to you. We pray that tonight in the name of Jesus, that they will understand and recognize that you, God, want to use these temples. Holy Spirit dwells in these temples. And we want their temples to be in good health, functioning in good, not sickly, not sickly, not um, their bodies, uh, um, uh, all kind of filth and evil in their bodies, all kind of substances that will eventually take them down. We come against that tonight in the name of Jesus. We come against smoking, starting to smoke and alcohol and drugs. We come against all of that. Because it destroys the temple of God. We come against premarital sex. It destroys the temple of God. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that they would give these temples back to you. So that you can get glory through them. You call the young because of their strength. You have a work for our young men to do. And they can't do it broke down. They can't do it broke down. So, Father, we pray. God, we pray over their mind in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of confusion, every spirit of darkness, every spirit of wickedness that would try to attach itself to their bodies. Father, we pray over them tonight in the name of Jesus. We say, God, let your blood cover, let your blood cover and let them be hidden from the attack of the enemy that would destroy their temple. Father God, we'll give you praise for it in Jesus name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so we are down to our last group of men that we have on here. And we are praying for Delante, John, Jonathan, uh, Derek, Robert, Zachary, Nate, Paul, Ross, um, David, another David, Pastor McIntosh, Rodney, Donald, C. Cuz, Roosevelt, Brandon, Andre, Benny, Jordan, Tyson, and all of our family members that we haven't called. We've been praying for other people. So we're including our, the men in our family in this last prayer. And we are going to, let, let me see, let me see what we say. Let me see. Okay, let me go back to... Let's go back to protection. Let's go back and we'll get that scripture that we pray all the time. Second Samuel, amen, 22, three through four, because we are almost out of time. And the scripture is my God, my rock in whom I take refuge. You are their shield. You're the horn of their salvation. You're their stronghold. You're their refuge. You're their savior. You save them from violence. And we prayer warriors call upon the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and they are saved from their enemies. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time that we have been able to bring our family members. We have been able to bring those that the names that we have on our list, and we have prayed over them. Father, we thank you for hearing every prayer, and you answer them. We thank you, God, you have been gracious to us. You've been gracious to us. You've allowed us to pray over these names for the, almost an entire year. And we have seen your hand of protection. We've seen your hand of provision. We've seen your hand of justice. We've seen your hand of favor. And Father, we thank you. You don't owe us anything. You don't owe us anything. We couldn't earn the blessings that we have because you are our Father. So God, we just thank you tonight that you have been in the midst we believe that every prayer that has been prayed is already answered. We believe every prayer that has been prayed tonight is standing before you and you're watching for an opportunity to show mercy and kindness to these, these young men. We bless you tonight for this opportunity of prayer. We thank you for every prayer warrior who stood in agreement with your word. 
We, we believe your word. We have seen your word. We speak your word. We live your word. We walk in your word tonight and we give you praise and all of the glory because it belongs to you. So Father, as we leave from this platform tonight, we're not leaving your presence. And I pray God that you go with every prayer warrior, every prayer warrior's family, that you keep by your power. Certainly God, we will give you all praise and all glory because no one in heaven or earth is, is um, deserving of it, but you, in Jesus' name we pray, we decree it and declare it, amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, prayer warriors, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we will be starting our series on the mouth and the tongue. Um, it promises to be very eye-opening, amen. As God continues to mold us and prepare us and shape us and push us forward into this time that he has for us to be lights in a dark world. So we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Amen. Thank you so much. Love you all, prayer warriors. Love you, Lady Lyles. Um, um, we'll, Tuesday night, Pastor Strain will be with us. Wednesday, I will be back. Thursday, Minister Smith is supposed to be with us. And Friday, we still probably, Sister Celeste will not be here as her brother's service is on Saturday. So I doubt seriously she will be with us on Friday. Please keep her. And I know you are keeping her in your prayers. And then Saturday, I believe Mother Shirley will be back with us. We certainly hope so. And Sunday, I will be back Sunday morning, 945, and prayerfully back Sunday evening at 7 p.m. I love you all so much. Thank you, prayer warriors. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.